Hello everyone, this is Kathleen and I am here today with another very easy cereal box cover. So this is a continuation kind of of the, the one we did the other day where I showed you how to sand it. I showed you how to um, score the rounded spine and and then I showed you an easy, um, let me get it. Away, apparently anyway um, I showed you a very easy cereal box just kind of with a, a, a really easy collage on the front and I know we've done a master board um, before on a cereal box but some of you requested that I do another master board and so I'm just going to show you I mean we could do it on a piece of paper and then cut down a panel for the front um, that's kind of what I had intended to do, but I think I'll just go ahead and make it on the cover. So I have, um, I have some papers pulled. Um, I have, the way I do this is, you know, I, I think I've showed, shown you my boxes before. So I have three stacked boxes. I don't know if you can see them. The bottom one is for large papers, scraps. There's just all kinds of scraps in here, and these are papers for collage. And then the medium-sized box is uh, for scraps also, but these generally have colors on them or prints or something. These This actually should go up in here, as should that. Um, yeah, sometimes it's hard to keep them sorted, but... But anyway, these are, are papers that go in a collage kind of at the middle layer. And then the final smallest um, tray is for little things that end up going on the top um, of the pyramid. You know, you have the bottom foundation layer, then you have the middle decorative layers, and then you have the final focus layers. So that's kind of the way I have my papers. Um, organized for when I do this kind of thing. Um, so I have pulled some papers and I'm starting with the larger papers. Um, so I have I have some German book page here. I have some numbers. I, I look for books that have numbers like this because I, I really love that in collage. And, and Masterboard, you know, is just a great big collage. And then I have some, some papers that are contrasting in color. So that's what we'll start with. And I need to, oh, and then, and then I have some to kind of begin to fill in the, the gaps. So I, I have some ledger paper. I have um, a scrap of I don't know, it's just scrap. This is from a work basket magazine. I liked the lipstick vine. Um, it's from a nursery. And so th these are going to be kind of focused sort of on gardening or, yeah, spring um, because they're for the festival that I'm doing. So let me get um, a paper to put down. I can find one in the trash. And apparently, I can't. So, I'll just have to get a baby wipe and be ready to clean up the mat. Okay, here we go. We've got the mat and gel, and we get a paintbrush. I think we'll use this one and a bigger one here at the beginning. Okay. All right, here we go. Because I'm going to do probably a um a final coat on on this, I think I'll start. There's a different cut a couple different ways, you know, you can start a masterboard. You can start at the 
the corner and work down in a diagonal. You can start in the middle and work out or the edges and work in. Um, I'm, I'm going to start in the corner. Try to get all the, the bubbles out. Pretty straight, yeah. All right, and then we'll put the book page here in the opposite corner. of want to leave that little bit of a margin here at the beginning because um, because this is, is you know the, the cover the book cover I kind of want a little bit of margin on the edges I can have things run off that's that's not gonna bother me but I think I like to kind of start with a margin. Oh dear. Getting glue everywhere. That's why I wanted a little paper, but okay. All right. Then I want numbers and I, because the lines are kind of going this way, I want to emphasize that these vertical stripes. So, well, but there's that. I kind of like that. Yeah, I think I'll put this down here. You know, I don't, I don't know why I make. Sometimes I do, I guess, but I don't know why I'm making decisions. Honestly, I think now I need to be careful. This is my spine, so I don't want to put anything like right on that edge. I need to overlap it. I think we'll do that. We'll overlap it this way. Now I need another contrasting color down here, but I don't, I don't know what we're going to have. This is the front, so let's put this at the back. And do we want to have it going this way, maybe? I don't want to cover up all of that, so I'm going to tear that. All right, I think maybe we'll put that green edge over here. If we put it here, then some of it is going to get covered up, but maybe that's okay. Let's try that. You know, it's better that you not get too uh, worried about things. 
honestly, no need to worry because it's just paper. And if I don't like the way it turns out, I can keep working on it and, um, and it'll be fine. Or if I really don't like it, then I can just toss it. Okay, now let's start working with some smaller papers. This would be pretty up here, because then that's gonna be opposite there. Or I really want to get some. I want to get some ledger in there. and use this other paper further on top. Okay. Maybe. Here's another piece of ledger. It has these fun holes on it. So some people like the torn edges and some people um, like cut edges, you know, more squared. It just is up to you. Completely. All right. I'll just lay that there for a minute. Okay, what else I have? Is I have this little theme, the soil in your garden. It's kind of a, a rip off from something. Let's put that down here. Actually, that would need to be on top. Let's do, let's do, uh, I want to add here and let's do just a little bit of color with that tissue let's put this down Okay, I kind of liked this piece. But no room here. We'll have to save that for the next one. Let's put this cactus plant thing down here because I have a little uh, fussy cut of a cactus, so I'm going to um, put that there, and then I'll put this on the back, let's see where the bend is, there it is. Okay. 
So, you know, you just kind of build up layers. That's, that's what Masterboard is all about. It's just building up layers. Um, This was kind of just a little article out of the Work Basket magazine. So I think we're going to put that down here instead of that pretty flower. Here, we'll put it off the edge and then we can cut it. good. I think that I want to um, I want to get I think we'll save that for another one. I want to get um, a stamp or two in here. So let me do Maybe I want a little bit of color. This is going to match this color here. Before I stamp that, I need to dry this part right there. So, sorry about the noise. I don't want my stamp, you know, to get glue on it. enough. This is my favorite 25. I'm going to put that just right there. I hope I got it straight. I don't think so. I think it's kind of not bad, I guess. Hmm. All right. Now let me dry that. It's a little bit crooked. Darn it. Okay. Now. Okay, so I've got Two different weights this is kind of a, this is a wallpaper and it's heavier you know than what's underneath it and I can see I've got some bubbles that ledger is quite a bit thinner than this and the ledger is also thinner than what's underneath it and so yeah we've got bubbles coming all right you know, I kind of like the back the way it is. Let's look at our competition or comp composition. We've got flower and garden. We've got this. This is focal focus 
comes here, I comes back down here, so that's kind of a triangle. Um, and I wanted to put this in there somewhere. put it down here but I think I'll cut a little bit of it off one, one moment okay yeah I think we'll put this right down here at the bottom overlap that Okay, so I think for the most part, I think the master board is, is done. Now we just have to decide um, what we want for like a fake point on the front of the cover and then just add the little details. So in order to do that, I need to be able to see where the edges are, where the bend is. So let me give that just a little bit of a, a dry. And then we'll trim it so that we can see the edges and see what else we need to do. But yeah, I kind of like the way that looks. I think I need something over here. Um, but then once we have it bent, see that'll be on the back, this will be on the front. So, so I just need to take a look at it. So this would be easier to do, especially easier on camera, if I were to use glue sticks. But if you remember, I've been trying to help you understand the, the issues that happen when you use different kinds of glue and then, then a top coat of matte gel or Mod Podge or something like that. So, yeah. I find it easier to use the same kind of glue and then it doesn't interact and cause problems. Okay, I think that's dry enough that I can at least trim. So let's get the scissors and flip it over. And trim. around that curve come around that curve I'm gonna definitely I've been promising to clean my scissors and I keep thinking that that I'll do a video about housekeeping in the studio how to clean your scissors and how to recondition your paint brushes and stuff like that so I will put that on the list but yeah so these scissors are just ready they're ready for that all right okay oh I kind of like that I kind of like the way that looks oh I actually really do yeah I think that looks great Okay, so this is, you know, the, the rounded spine, and I don't want to put too much of a bend in it yet. Okay, that's the front. It's pretty. This is the back. That's also pretty. This is a little closer to the bend than I had wanted, but, and that is as well. Hmm. Maybe I'll, I might just cover a little bit of that up. I need 
need something. Yeah, I kind of like that. Let's do that. Let's put this. This is a really, um, it's a ticket of some kind. The Chicago and Alton Railroad Company. 762. It's kind of a nice little ephemera piece. And let's go. Oh, I want it over that. All right, that's not going to bisect that, so that's good. Okay, now I need, I do, we need something here. Um, yeah, let's put this little bit of, not sure what it is, but you know, put it over that. of off the, the edge and then your eye will travel off the edge. That's one of those implied lines, if you remember me talking in the, the tag template about long lines. Remember I, I told you that there is what's called an implied line and that is a line that goes off into infinity and and it also is a direction where your your eye moves so an implied line is a directional line this is a very thin piece of paper and it is bubbling as it turns on on that spine you see there's an edge right there of the of this paper and and that's what's creating a wrinkle. Okay. Let me trim that. Yes, that that helps. That helps my eye, I think. I like that better. Okay, now we just need a little something here. A little maybe a little add. A tiny one. Do we have a tiny one? Well, here's Here's a little order blank. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Okay. All right, and then we have this that needs to be smashed a little as the things come up. Okay, now, now we have this is the front, and we need we need to do what what we're gonna do here on the front. So I think I'm gonna put this flower there might need to be a little taller so there's a triangle between this flower this flower and this text which our eyes always want to read text so your eye is going to go there and then um Since your eye is going to travel here, we could come put this further down. I kind of wanted another little bit of green since this is like a gardening kind of festival. Maybe no, that doesn't match. Well, it could, but but then it, it is too close to another 
horizontal line right there. And you can't see this one as much, but you can definitely see the edge of that on there. And I don't want to create that. I could put it off center. Well, I know I want to put that there, so let's put that down. Do I want to put that on there or leave it off? This will have, um, hmm, I kind of like it there actually. And then we'll have a, some kind of a button. Let me grab a button and see. Put it kind of under the button. That might be good. No. See, I made this decorative edge and I'm trying not to cover that up. But you know what? When you do collage, sometimes you just have to be willing to cover it up if it needs something. And it needs something there. Maybe another, um, hmm. maybe my problem is I'm not liking that that's a focal point. I thought I would, but... I'm not sure that I do. Let's see. Let's see if we have a butterfly. I have to laugh. My daughter-in-law, Kate, she says, if you're in doubt, paste a butterfly on. And she's usually right. Yeah. I think, we, I think we're going to go with a butterfly to kind of overlap this edge. And okay. All right. There we go. Let's make sure that is stuck down good. I think that will do it. If I put that there, then there's a definite triangle right there. And I know some of you are probably thinking, ah, oh, I don't like that. But I think. I think it's going to be okay. Let's see, that is going to just be a wrinkle because of the, the, the spine. All right. Let me try that for just a minute and see. While I'm drying that, what I'm thinking is, uh, this is this is a focal point, and it's got this over here because the color, and so it's not balanced up here. I need something that is gonna 
balance those two, preferably in a triangle. So I have another green stamp where I could get a green stamp, which would be smaller, or I could get to have, have a little blue stamp. And that might work too. Just something, you know, that 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 balances from the bottom to the top. Yeah. It also feels balanced with this over here, but I have to remember that that's not part of it because that's this is on the back. But you can see that there is some there's something a little off about this because this is heavy right here, and and I guess that's okay because at least it's on the bottom and not on the top. But I just think if I put something right up there and that will yeah I think that'll help balance it so that's what I'm going to do because that is it's just too light right there so I'm going to put this on there and that will That'll balance it for me. Balance is another, um, it's another important design element. And I've talked, I think I've talked about it, I'm not sure. I'll have to check my videos and see um, and do a little lesson on balance. There, I actually, I like it. That makes it better for me. Yeah, okay, there it is. So that's that one. Now, this is going to have to dry really before we, um, let me just put a little bit of heat on that. I realize that I have not shown you how to do the eyelet and the, the button. I do have a video on the button and I will leave that, that button closure below. Um, I think this one I will because it's so busy I think I will probably put um, maybe I'll put a button I'll see what it looks like but um, I often want to just sit with this for a bit to see what I might how I might want to further I, I think it's pretty busy so I'm not sure how much more I want to put on it so if I put a button, then that adds to the busyness. But I do like the way that turned out. And so once it's dry, and then we're going to do another cereal box cover. I've got a couple more ideas to show you. Easy. But, but there you go. There's a master board, another master board. And I may put two eyelets and ribbon closure on this one. Or I may do a button. But either way, once it's dry, then I'll come back and show you how to complete it. Thanks so much. But there's the Masterboard Easy Cereal Box cover. So thanks for being with me, and I'll be back.